Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. <laughs> That's like what he just said. Like you know how Stefan would turn back to Urkel yeah. and all them little ha yeah. Shante, one knee cheese. <laughs> he would like flip flop from King Richard back to Will. Oh, how's it going? Did I do that? Like he was fucking. Oh, on his second. Yeah, Will okay. was flip flopping. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm back in. I'm back in Hitch. I'm hitching. I'm, hitching. I'm going from Hitch. It was like, or like when Buddy Love and Sherman yeah. Clump was yeah. fighting over his the body. hand is out. It's like Will. Buddy, you keep Will's. talking. I'll tear your arm off. Yeah. He just regged. He regged Chris Rock. <laughs> Did Chris Rock get him? <laughs> Did Chris Rock get him? <laughs> and then Will Smith is like, fuck that, dude. You're messing with Buddy Love. Oh, I'm shit. Fuck oh, I'm fuck shit. shit up. Oh, my God, guys. Welcome to another splendiferous episode. Splendiferous. Uh, no need for apologies. Today's going to be a fun one, man. Oh. You hear that voice. You know him. You love him. Thank you. Welcome back, the great Dan Soder. The great Dan Soder. Always fun to be back. How I you like, doing, man? I like you guys that added more Ninja Turtle stuff to the room. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Just my only note, maybe a little Casey Jones flair. Maybe uh, a hockey stick over this mouth. Yeah, that's all. That was how you knew all those mass shootings were coming for white kids when Casey <laughs> Jones was the most popular character in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Wow. <laughs> they're like, look at all these turtles. And they're like, what about a white guy that settles the score? Yeah. Crumpet? You got to know what a crumpet is. Yeah. Well, we talk about Yo, crumpet. Right? Yeah, he was a white guy with sweatpants, Dude, no pockets. He I was mean, genuine, this guy. Yeah. He would have he would have stormed the Capitol. <laughs> yeah, Casey yeah, Jones. Would've. Casey yeah. Jones was in Pelosi's yeah, office. Yeah, he would have did it. Yeah, yeah man. The Your instructor's Casey Jones. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> And that was real heat. That was real. He had turtle racism. Yeah. He did not like turtles. Yeah, he, he was not phased by the fact that they were turtles in the movie either. I mean, his <laughs> first fight with Raphael. Yeah, they he, should. They look should, at, they look should, at that. Jesus. Even the movie in the in the very first movie. You're right with that fight with Raphael. They really should do a prequel with Casey Jones and all like the fucked up shit he saw. So that it makes sense when he sees a giant turtle, he's like, brother, <laughs> brother, I watched a woman suck off a donkey. You think I care about some karate turtle? Because all he did, because all he, he did, did was ask fuck. her, what are you, some kind of punker? Yeah. I don't like punkers, especially in green makeup. That's what he said. That's I it. love that That's all he said. It's... Ignorant enough, but still pronounces karate the yeah. right way. And <laughs> then <laughs> took a joke and then let a joke slide off his fucking shoulder. Yeah, a Jose buddy. Canseco bat? Yeah. Tell me, you didn't pay money for this. All he did was... Ooh, that's all he yeah. said. Yeah, that was a weird interaction. I want to go back and read. Yeah. yeah. Two minutes for slashing. Two He's got all these for hockey puns. Uh, and let's not forget my personal favorite. Two, two minutes, minutes for high sticking. <laughs> yeah. How about a five minute game misconduct for roughing, roughing pal? pal? He goes, hey, how about... Baby. The, how about Arizona's voting machines we never really looked at? So how are you going to tell me that Michigan went blue when I know for a fact federal government doesn't want you to have the president you're supposed to have? Street toughs with knowledge, right? Yeah. Him just, Street toughs him with just, political knowledge. I just want to know about the cabal that's ran by pedophiles that's controlling Hollywood and Washington. Like, Dude, Casey Jones, thank you for helping us fight Shredder, but we cannot keep you around. <laughs> it's like all I'm saying is I grabbed a April's tits. That's it. Oh yeah, uh, and I'm a bad guy. Dude, he he would have fucking her. sexually hard. We watched Yo, the movie, so the Mike so and sexual say, attention. Yeah, in that he scene. forces her. I'm dude. going off memory. Oh, yeah. we no, watch this I, movie I all the time. Movie she wanted to fuck a turtle. <laughs> Absolutely. And then he harassed her. Mikey and thought he was in there. Shit. And Mikey. Raph was Raph in love with was in there. Right. And Raph gracefully bowed out. And Mikey has the attitude where he's like, hey, we could double team her, bro. <laughs> and Raphael's like, no, nah, bro. He come in He so, came in. Nyuck, nyuck. Yeah. <laughs> and now you understand the dynamic. Because if you look around, it's only these two turtles. Yeah, I love it's it. It's only Mikey and Raph. A, you don't have a nerd or a leader. Well, nah. yeah. Because yeah. that's not us. Yeah. That's, that's not why, us we, at all. We are the, we're the Mike and Raph. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm Raph. He's Mike. And yeah, that's that's our attitude. Party, dude. Yeah. It sucks Party that, dude. It sucks to know in the turtle universe that I'm Baxter, the scientist that turns into a bug. <laughs> 
Doesn't that just Baxter suck? Baxter Stockman. Yeah. Baxter Stockman, yep. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Played by Tyler Perry in the second one. Really? He was the... He, I do remember that. Yeah. You know what's crazy? Big J and I saw this on the bonfire. The scene where the uh, kid goes to the Foot Clan's hideout. Yeah, Danny. Danny. Yeah, Danny. When he goes down the stairs, the kid that's offering him cigarettes is Sam Rockwell. Yes. Yep. Yes. Crazy. What yes. do you want? Menthol or regular? Goes, we got the menthol. Yeah. We got the regular. We got the menthol. Yes. They, and I've, I've only been to that party once. Yeah. Like my entire life, I grew up looking for a place like that. Oh, that was my middle school friends. I was friends <laughs> with the Foot Clan. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to go Smoker to a place that had video open. games, a skateboard ramp, oh, dude. a rat chained to a fence that we could just slap whenever we want to. Yeah, we used Crazy. to go to this girl, fucking Laura's house, and her fucking mom, I'm pretty sure, was a prostitute. But okay. She was a massage therapist. Yeah. Okay. Have clients in their townhouse. But <laughs> yo, we were like 12, and she would just let us in the basement, smoke cigarettes and weed and oh, drink. Those houses with the and best, were, they? It was, dude, my friend David was 13 and fought two 16 year olds on the front lawn. Like mm -hmm. it was sanctioned. Yeah. Like they had it fucking, <laughs> no one called the cops. Yeah. The fight went, the fight went the distance. A 21 year old got involved. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. Front rest. yeah, dude. But it was straight up foot clan vibes. When you would walk down her stairs, you're like anything, anything yeah. can go. The anything closest want, thing that I got. have been to, to that foot clan party is skank fest. Yeah. <laughs> dude, they should just start. So whatever you want to do. Do it. Do it. I can't, dude, they should. You got any cigarettes? <laughs> Skanks fans should just call themselves the Foot Clan. <laughs> is Lewis is Lewis Shredder? Does that mean Lewis is Shredder? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Then that means what? Is Dave that little growling Chinese man? Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Tatu. <laughs> Tatu. <laughs> yeah. Who's Jay? Never lower your eyes uh, to is, an enemy. Is Jay Super Shredder? <laughs> Either Super Shredder or Crane. He's a uh, Toker. Crane. Rezar. Crane is He's Toker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's Rezar. Man, Toker. that movie, I was... That was the, the most excited, outside of maybe like Jurassic Park. Absolutely. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was Turtles, seven years old. I was like... <sighs> yeah, we went in. <sighs> yep. My Dylan. mom took me to the theater. I'll never oh, my that God. Day. Is is that episode of Doped Up and Dying where we talked about the turtles, is that still up on YouTube anywhere? It may or may not be. Uh... Copyright might have gone eventually. Okay, fine. If you can find it and just we'll post a link or whatever, you know what I mean, and a thing. But we've covered this movie. I we've love covered it. it. I on love his it. podcast. I mean, we watched would... along, you know what I mean? And it's a great I don't want to go back and do that with Jurassic Park. Because that Jurassic movie Park, oh, coming I can, out. We can do it. Forrest Gump. I got yeah. There's Forrest a lot Gump, of Jurassic them. But Daniel, Jurassic do it? Park dropped. Right on my tenth birthday. Ninety three, yeah. Oh, like, okay. Like the week of my tenth birthday. Yeah. So that solves the birthday party problem. My yeah. mom's gonna take six six kids to go see Jurassic Park. That's my, that was my birthday party. Oh, and wow. then we'd go back to my house, and my mom would cook burgers for people. Like that so, was. So tell me when that water started vibrating at <sighs> ten years old. I know you was like, get the fuck out of here. Let me tell you how much of an emotional little bitch your boy Dan <laughs> Soder is. I was so I was so raised by a woman <laughs> that I was so in my emotions because as the movie was starting, two of my friends got into a fight. And I was like, this, what are you guys doing? I was like, Gah. I love the movie, but I was like, Eric Medina and Scala Captain did not have to fight right before the movie started. <laughs> dumped one of my they friends. They had to be dumped, separated. <laughs> yeah, they got into his thing, and then my friend, he was sitting in front of him, dumped a thing of popcorn on his head and like mushed it. And then the kid came back, and I was like, Dinosaurs! <laughs> We're about to see dinosaurs! <laughs> stop it. Like, stop! Stop! I want to see dinosaurs! My mom wasn't there. She's probably fucking at the bar down the street. You know, like dropped us off. And was yeah. Like, oh, so there was no adult supervision. Oh. If there was, she didn't see it. Yeah, yeah, Because no yeah. one really got into it. Yeah. And then every, everything cooled down, and I was like, oh, this birthday party's ruined. <laughs> wow. I was just sitting there watching, like, my birthday party's ruined. God bless the people who... Oh, man. Feel the need to settle conflict right then and there, oh, even yeah. at a young age. Yeah, those, those kids probably still settle conflict like that. That's the part of the. That's the Will Smith part of the brain. Oh yeah, where right. they just walked up and slapped someone, and you're like, "We're at the Oscars." <laughs> <laughs> someone with my bitch energy just sitting there. Come on, like, you guys, guys are both black. Don't do this. Come right? on, you guys yeah. both make stuff I like. <laughs> wiki wiki wow. Wiki, oh, wiki, Wiki Wild wow, People wow, I West. like are fighting. Dude, that we really was went wild, wild West. That was the we wildest did. thing to hear, dude. We were doing a show last night. We we're doing Black Ass Comedy Black Show. Ass comedy which show. thank you everybody for coming out, man. And yeah. a huge shout out to Reem, who's a podcast listener who brought his first date. Nice there. to the Black Ass first Comedy. First date to Black Ass sat up front, took a beating. A good uh good kind of exposure to that woman on like, hey, this is what I'm into. Yeah. This is what I like. 
Let's see if you like it. She had a good time too. I, I hope it works out, man. Yeah, yeah, bring her back in the summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, this this Will Smith thing broke. Like he slapped Chris Rock while we were on, on stage. stage. We came off to people showing us the video, and then we were kind of giving the play by play. But it was an unbelievable. It's a weird thing to say. It's a weird thing funny. to even say. Like. Will Smith just smacked Chris Rock. It doesn't even sound like a real sentence. I got like the video. I got a text to me in a thread, and I like looked at it, and I was like, "What is this?" And then I watched, and I was like, immediately as a wrestling fan, I was like, "That's a work, right? That's not real, right?" That, he stomped while he did it. The way he did, yeah, yeah. he's like one, yeah. two, <laughs> count out to three, three, four. <laughs> Jada gave him something, and he pulled it. He put it back in his. He hit Rock with it, and then put it back in. Put it back in his tux. That's but he, um, I watched that again and I was like, no, you, I knew it was real when he sits down and he was like, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. The yelling. Fuck, not the Twice. first one. The, the second, second one. one. Yeah. Where you're like, yeah. I've been that mad before. Yeah. Where you're like, that's that's the same. You know how you say a phrase when you're in a fight and you catch that and you, phrase. And you, and that's the that's one your that you phrase. Repeat? Yeah, yeah. Dylan, like, do you, you have touch it? my shoulder? <laughs> touch my shoulder. And then you're just like yelling. You touched my shoulder. Oh, yeah, and you're like, yeah, what does yeah, that yeah. mean? You're hyping yourself yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was getting. He blew himself up. Right. And that was the interesting thing was the the fear. You could almost kind of see the fear in Will afterwards, like the reality of what he had just done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, I'm standing behind this decision, but I know I fucked up. Yeah. But also, Chris, right here. Oh, wow. Wow. Because right there, Will's walking off with kind of a, sma- a smirk. There One. Is. He's angry. Look at that. Here. I know that. Yes. He hit fucking a little harder that time too. Right Dead here. quiet. I love. <laughs> I love Chris Rock, dude. Right here, he's like because oh, I can there's a weird period. Yeah, pause that because that part of thinking Talk is about that. I know what I'm supposed to be doing he's right like, now, you, like as a man. Yeah, he's like you mother. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, but I have but a job to do. I also think Rock is there's, there's probably like 20 thoughts going on in his head. Number one is. Can I take Will Smith? Mm. What happens if I go down this stage and I, you know, probably not good, but then use your your greatest weapon, which is you could just say all the shit that you know about him in a funny way. Absolutely. That's what I was thinking. And then he probably had to think the backup one of like, well, then I won't, then I'm fucked. Then I won't work anymore. You know? Really? You think he wouldn't work if he like we I all think he would saw work. that. I Regardless- think he would work, but I don't think he would play the fucking zebra in Madagascar three. Gotcha. Because <laughs> there's some you know what I mean? Chris Rock will be fine. He's a millionaire. But I'm saying like they love those jobs where they do like two weeks of work and get six point five million dollars. Sweatpants to yeah. go, Whoa, I don't know, pony. <laughs> and then they go buy a Maserati. It's like, yeah, that's those are the jobs you don't want to lose. Yeah, yeah. Which is always funny because there's the other side of that canceling shit is that like people will be like, "Oh, he just didn't want to. He just didn't want to get canceled." And you're like, "He just didn't want to lose his job." Well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. How do you? Wait. So this guy's gonna go broke to impress your ass? I never understood Absolutely. the amount of people that got put on a no fly list for fight, fighting in the airport during the pandemic was <laughs> so insane. It's yeah. So funny. It was. I can't wait. It flip flops no less. I can't wait till that crosses my world and I'm just like. So anyway, it's like yeah, like fly on out and they go. Um, <laughs> <sighs> like September of 2020, I don't know, dude. I was in a bad place, and I was on a Delta flight. They told me to pull up my mask, and I, I kind of got kicked off the flight, and I'm not allowed to fly. And uh, like, yeah, it's there's a lot of people. Gone. It's okay, all we're... your flight privileges are gone. gone. You're like a terrorist. <laughs> Absolutely, that's terrorist coverage. You might as well have tried to well. smuggle a fucking bomb through on your shoe, right? Lovely. And it's like you were. Headed to vacation. Oh. So how do you lose focus on the fact that there's something bigger on the other end of this conflict? Because yeah. some people are too short-sighted and they're just living their anger like that. Like, that's what got Will Smith. Okay. He, he when he got angry, when he saw Jada was mad, because he laughed at the joke. There's, he like, video laugh. of it. And then when he comes back, he could have done that, like, <sighs> Fuck, say something later. Say something later. But instead, he, the same way those people got kicked off and could never fly again, he was like, fuck this. Yeah. And just got up and was like, I, I will not wear a mask. Yep. Right. And that's how it happened. Yep. But this is also my theory on this. Okay. That this is a good theory. Will gets so caught up in the characters. He's method. 
that he that was still Richard Williams. He was still like uh, Richard Williams, like he took that on, and that the, the Will, Carey Will is there Eddie laughing, Coleman? like yeah, that is pretty funny. And the Richard Williams and him is like, nah, better, nah I better nah. do something. Yeah, you yeah. know. And Richard Williams would slap the shit out of Chris Dude, Rock. I fucking love it. I love the thought of actors getting being able to get away with that. Yeah, and just Daniel Day Lewis being like, "I did take your land, bro, because I'm Daniel Plainfield, <laughs> bro. I'm from There Will Be Blood." <laughs> And you're like, oh, you can't do that, dude. You can't do something shitty to me and claim it was your character that you played in the movie. Bro, Remember that I shit read... with Jim Carrey when he played Andy Kaufman and they couldn't figure out the yeah, two and whole... him and the director was fighting whole, and all that shit. There's a whole shit. documentary about yeah. it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But and then I... you see the work. And, and Will like... has a dark side to him. I read his book. He talked yeah. about that, about how he once thought about when his dad was older and like sick and cancer ridden. Thought about throwing him down a flight of steps and just calling nine one one, and he was like, "My acting, I could pull it off. That you know, it was an accident." You yeah, know what I mean, he had already mapped it out, though. Damn, dude, I, Will Smith really, Will and Jada just started saying everything like four years ago. That Red Book show started, yeah, and then their whole lives just came out, yeah, about absolutely. their sex lives, about all their beliefs and shit, and you almost kind of got to be mad, being like, "Hey, this is great. No one knew shit." And then you had to start that dumb Facebook show the with, table our, talk. with your mom and our daughter. Yeah. And then just fucking. But that also shows how done they are with it. Like it's a it's a thing now in the past that they talk about. Yeah. Their relationship. Remember this crazy point in our life? Let's write a book about it. Let's do a podcast about yeah. it. That's yeah. like that's like if I used to be on drugs and now I do a podcast about recovery. Yeah. I'm done with it. I'm past it. You know I, what I mean? I like, will I will say the funniest episode of Red Book was when they had Snoop on and Jada was talking about Pac and and she was like Pac said bitch too much, and Snoop just like threw him under the bus. He was like, oh, definitely. I told him to stop saying bitch, and he just kept doing it. And you're like, Snoop, you piece of shit. You fucking- This niche came from you. What yeah. Are you- he's, like, yeah. Oh, he's like, oh, for sure. I told Pac, you got to be nicer to the ladies. I don't love and he those. said, he said, shut up, Snoop. He said, shut up. And I stopped. That's when I stopped talking. It's like, dude, you're throwing your dead friend under the bus so hard right now. Uh, I and I think that's also funny too, like like you know, because they're all just like nerds at, yeah. at the end of the day. So yeah. to to look at like a fight between Tupac and Snoop, and you're like, oh god, these guys are arguing. But it's also like, well, it's two performing arts kids. Just yeah, they went to performing arts high school. <laughs> that's exactly it. Arts high school. They both probably the know both lyrics to, to fucking Oklahoma. The, they, both of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at one point, at at one point, both of them in high school went. Today's gonna be the day, <laughs> and everyone was like, "Tupac, that was beautiful." Right, right, right. He was like, "Oh, I really did like that." <laughs> I'm not gonna be afraid. It's the guys that are dangerous are the guys that they keep around them for cred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys that are like, I don't know, he pays my light bill, and if someone says something to him, yeah. yeah. The only artist that's ever came true to like being is Beanie Siegel. Where Beanie was just like, yeah. uh, I am this guy. Yeah. So I'll hop over this railing if you say something mean to Jay Z. you dead in the face. Do you remember the diary of Jay Z? Uh-huh. There's just a clip where Beanie goes over the railing and he at a club. throws a microphone and, in yeah. Queens. Yeah. Which I respected that. I always wanted to have that type situation. I would just want to know that if I was away from home and outnumbered, I'd still be going into the crowd like that. It, that was so impressive. That to me. was insane. Nobody insane. went with him. Yeah. He was bang, like, bang. I got it. No. Like, what the fuck? No. Bang Bang Seagull Street Gang. Early, dude. That's Barry. Boy. That guy was supposed to be in the studio. He was supposed to be in the studio recording albums. He was in West Philly at strip clubs shooting people in the stomach. You crazy. know what I mean? Like, and the, that bar that he was at, the Ponytail Lounge, like That's 52nd crazy. Street, it is not a place like. I'm not even that famous, and I shouldn't be over there. <laughs> yeah. I, there's no re- if I got in trouble on 52nd yeah. Street, you'd be like, "What are you doing? Why here? were you doing there, <laughs> yeah. Dave? Why were you there? Same, bro." But then it it is. It's funny yeah. because it's all the artistic kids that keep them around. I had like a uh, crazy interesting conversation with Cypher Sounds about how different rappers have different uh, like groups yeah. that'll hold down cities for them. Like the Drake's, like he was, he was kind of going into how Drake has this deal with dudes in Toronto, that okay. like kind of Drake's like, listen, I'm gonna be the, this is gonna be the city I rap, I, blah 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 blah. I'll let you throw the after parties of my shows that I do here, and you can keep the money, mm-hmm. and then you guys kind of just don't let anyone fuck with me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. a good deal, and you're like, what a these businessmen and like fucking performing arts kids are just completely bamboozling all of us because I'm just <laughs> like. <laughs> I'm just Absolutely. Like, Jesus Christ, that's uh, when I saw genius. when I Genius. watched 
set it Soldier up. Soldier Boy and Lil Wayne kind of start throwing around those blood claims and the yeah. flags and stuff. And it's like, yeah. we've watched both of you grow up. Yeah, Lil Wayne when and Chris you, Brown. When did you Chris. get? Yeah, when did you get the time? Yeah, and, you were in the Cash Chris, Money Army. Chris Brown <laughs> was the first person. I was able to understand what that was. Okay. Because I knew people who were feeding Chris drugs. Okay. And that's basically what it became. It was like, oh, no, when he comes, he buys drugs from us, and he buys a lot. Yeah. And, you know, so we, we just go yeah, ahead and, and let him. In the casino the business, they call that a whale. Exactly. Wow. We got a whale coming. So, yeah, here, take the bandana, run off. Yeah, say whatever you want. We'll that's give you so a pass. fucking funny. You know what I mean? That's because crazy. every time you come to town, yeah, you're dropping 10000 you know what I mean, or whatever. Yeah. Or you're coming. And that's the funny thing. These guys, that to them, that's marketing. they're like, that mar- it's that? the hood yeah, like, it and it's funny yeah. because other white guys go away from that like i remember when i used to hang out with artie lang artie would try to get rid of people when he goes to a city and they like they, you know they buy yeah. drugs and they want in and he's like no 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 yeah, no guys he had to change his phone number all the time so it was weird that black dudes were just like yeah i'm a blood now <laughs> well i think what it does is for like chris brown it gives them uh don't fuck with me energy where they're like you know chris brown like fucks with the bloods i wouldn't fuck with him mm-hmm where you know what I mean, like that would—that's what makes sense. But that's the same as like when we give celebrities an honorary degree. Yo, dude, I just saw this on Twitter. They're giving fucking Taylor Swift a doctorate. We haven't LA. learned. We haven't learned. Didn't we just have to take twenty-eight degrees back that's from Cosby? So funny. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight, 28 degrees honorary from prestigious degrees. universities, Wait, and we're still giving them out. That's the real number. It was. It was a lot. That's so funny. It was. Oh, Cosby it, it got was one a lot for every. Of he had a. He had a degree for every rape. <laughs> for every fucking case, he had a fucking fake doctor. I don't understand why we give our honorary degree. It, why? It, it like goes, demeans your entire. Process. Also, it's from you NYU. Take, it's for, yeah. It's from NYU. Yeah. Doctor Hold on. Taylor NYU. Swift got one from NYU. That's. Is there another? She's. She's getting an honorary degree from NYU. That's of what, course she is. A doctorate. A doctorate. God damn. Yeah, doctor in How many arts. years you got to do to get your doctor? You have to sell 17 million records. <laughs> <laughs> sell 17 million records and you'll be a doctor of whatever the fuck you want to be. Hold on. Where, Shaq didn't yeah. even get an honorary degree. Shaq yeah. had to go to school. Shaq's like, I had to finish my degree. <laughs> and you guys didn't even give me a doctorate. First off, I won championships in several different places. <laughs> I held the L.A. dynasty down, and I don't get a doctorate. Yeah, he actually yeah. went to I'd college. I'd be mad. I'd be very mad and if I Shaq. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, Shaq Cosby. got Papa John. Yeah, dude. Which w- that was f- what a move, dude. What a fucking power move. Papa, Papa John gets move. caught just yelling the N word in board uh, meetings, yeah. and then Shaq's like, "I'll take those franchises. <laughs> I'll take all those franchises." <laughs> Papa John, your worst nightmare is happening. <laughs> yeah. Give me that garlic butter. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Your the mediocre pizza is now ran by Shaq Fu. <laughs> yeah, man. It Hey there, auto mechanics and super cool do-it-yourself guys who DIY. work on cars. I want to tell you about rockauto.com. Rockauto.com. An online store with every auto part at the best prices. This is your one-stop shop for everything auto parts. RockAuto.com has been in business for 20 years, and they make it easy to find the parts that you need at the best prices possible. No more talking to the counter guy who needs to order your parts. They aren't really sure what you're looking for. Never quite have what you need, and then after all the hassle, we'll still charge you store Front markups. Everybody hates storefront markups. Mm-hmm. At rockauto.com, you can easily find everything you need. And whether you're a mechanic, mm-hmm. an auto shop, mm-hmm. or just working on your own car, mm. everyone has access to the same incredible pricing at rockauto.com. So if you're a car guy, car guy. right now, go to rockauto.com and check out the parts available for your car. You're going to have so much fun looking for car parts that uh so once more let's go to rockauto.com no promo code needed as their pricing are is already that good huh so when you order make sure you tell rockauto.com that you heard about them on no need for apologies rockauto.com that's r-o-c-k-a-u-t-o.com let's get back into it thanks Derek. it's fucking don't stop giving out <laughs> stop giving out fake doctorates yeah stop. stop it and i would be pissed if i went to a college and then someone got an honorary degree like that's worth more than mine yeah. and I had to put in the work Do you and the money dude. so the one deal my mom and I had when I was a kid growing up was she was like please go to college she's like that's all I'm gonna ask of you is your mom that's it Just please get a college degree so I feel like I did a good enough job that you went on to college you know what I mean because mm-hmm. okay. I think for the boomer generation that like 
that was the idea. Is like if Get you go to college, out. you're successful. Yeah, because yeah. they, they, they didn't realize they're fucking us and racking us with. All they knew was they go, when they went to work every day and they worked their ass off and they hit a ceiling and yeah. then they watch younger people come in and be with their degrees. boss and make more money than them. Yeah. And all they understood was why does he have that? Oh, he went to college. Okay, college. well. My kids aren't doing this. You're going to college. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. My mom was like, please just go to college. But then my mom is, this is very much her, where she was like, oh, you're paying for it. <laughs> she's like, oh, shit. She's like, I'm not paying for your college. <laughs> my mom you're paying for it. Like yeah. So she's like, you can go to community college and get your associates and then go to a major university. But I wanted to go to a major university. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go all four years into a major university. I wanted that like experience, which I ended up hating. But I took out loans. And went to the University of Arizona. The amount of fucking debt I was in when I left after four and a half years. I got yeah, my degree. Yeah. But I left. I have had a very fortunate and lucky career. Without that, I would have never been able to pay it off. Yeah. For a fucking journalism degree? <laughs> oh, wow. What the fuck? <laughs> Print media is dead. Yeah. And that's what, I, that's what I'm going to be racked with guilt for? That's the new slavery, bro. Yeah. Dude. That's the new slavery. Kyle, I got out early. I dropped out my freshman year. Dude, you. I, you know what? I Like, looking at it. Uh, maybe I should have. No. I wish I would have known about you could just sit in the classes and get the information and fuck the degree. That's what I would have loved. Yeah, about. if I would have known that, I would have maneuvered because you could just walk into class and sit down. No one takes roll. No one yeah. checks. Dude, I, and it's also by the... That would have been wild. You just going to college. Someone has done that. Yeah. There is a class. major person. There's someone... That just learn shit by and going And there's someone in? that we all... I, 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 maybe the Apple guy or somebody. Could you Google that? There's like somebody, some CEO who did not go to college. He just sat in all of the classes. That's got to be so funny. And got That's got to be funny, right? And he's, like, and he's like, and it's free. I don't yeah. know how to pay shit. Just auditing. Come yeah. He just has no paper that says he did the, the yeah. work, but he did it. But he, he learned it. it. He, he learned it. the knowledge. Right. That was the thing is I hated college so much it just pushed me to radio and stand up. So I'm lucky for that. And the reason that I like stayed in Tucson was to like get my degree. So it kind of made me, I don't know, it was like a good, it was a good thing in hindsight, mm -hmm. but the debt was never good. It took me a fucking hour Comedy Central special, an HBO special, <laughs> seven years on satellite radio, <laughs> fucking six seasons on billions uh, to pay off my loans. That's insane. To bro. pay off my loans. People are always like, oh, dude, you must have so much money. No, no, no. No, no. no. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I, From the Fannie powers May. of IMDb. Yeah. Yeah. Fannie yeah. Mae has all that money. Yo, Fannie dude, Mae. When I called and did that, that I was like, sad. on the phone, I was like, do you know how successful I had to be to pay this off? Jesus And she was Christ. like, right? <laughs> the, lady, nuts, the, lady, the lady that's taking the money doesn't fucking get any of that money. Right, so she's just right, like, hey, dude, right. I don't know. Give me the routing info. <laughs> yeah, like, oh because they're like people, they are they like, they're like guards letting you out of jail. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Exactly. Oh, whatever. That's the best way to put it. They're CEOs. They're like, dude, I don't here to punish you and fuck up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Cool, man. Good luck. Good luck with your rap career. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know? And you're like, ah, fuck, fuck you, dude. That's how it really felt. Felt like I got on and had like two hit albums and I was like, I finally paid off all my legal fees. Dude, but I'm glad we know now what it takes to pay off your student loan debt. That crazy. is for real. What Seven years said. of yeah, serious I'm, Yeah, I'm taking notes. That's yeah. what I do now. Is, yeah. That is the trajectory. Yeah, so it took, Holy shit. It took me, yeah, after that HBO special, they were like, I think we can like pay off these debts. Cause I was making chunks, taking I was taking chunks and chunks, and then finally they were like, mm. You want to go for it? <laughs> Probably the best day of my life was that yeah. call. Was I was like, let me make the call. Right, right, and I right. Called and I was like, our debts are clear. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went out and bought a fucking PlayStation game or something, you know, something childish. Another wrestling shirt. Did you find anything, Dylan, or who it was? That was just walking in on class, right? Oh, yeah, Goodwill Hunting? No, nah, uh, really? Dude, I love Louis' bit about this on his new special. Where he's like, of course, Matt Damon wrote this. Of course. Yeah, I couldn't find anything. This is the next best, best really? thing. Really? Fuck, there's someone. All right, I'm going to look at yeah, no, the post yeah, later. I know, I know you're right. I, I know you're right because I've heard about it. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, might, yeah. It's, it, it's got to be either Bezos fucking, uh, what's his name? No, I think Bezos went to college. But it's somebody like at that yeah. level yeah. that we all know and then I, we like, find might be, out. Might be Cuban, might be Mark Cuban, might be someone like something that. Something like that, It looks that, like yeah. a Mark Cuban move, but I, who knows? Yeah, like wow. just sitting in on a class and not taking the class. Oh, that's interesting. And then just turn it into fucking. 
fucking two billion. And could you imagine the person who is paying and they're just failing the class because they're not paying attention? They're just drunk and sleep, hung over, right. and they're like, "You guys, we went to Delta Psi, and this guy's like, yeah, 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 I gotta be at Wendy's in two hours." He's like, "So uh, fucking." <laughs> Did Talk that, about like just following the right path on your own. You so know? that's that's what I'm, I'm always obsessed with. That I'm always really obsessed with the children of super successful people, whether it be athletes, entertainers, businessmen. Specifically, the ones that always make me laugh are mafia members. Mafia guys always have shitty kids. Yeah, because oh, yeah. all those people that are super successful have pulled like the guy that goes to just that learns which classes he wants to go to and figures out how to go do all that and puts the work in and like learns it and soaks it in. He's going to go make billions of dollars and have a kid that's like, like phone doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, all right. Because that guy also knows how to walk away from those people. Yeah. Like, yeah. so like the minute that it's like, if he can't reach his kids yeah. because like the mom is like, oh, you're being too hard on him. Yeah. He'll be like, yeah, fuck this family. I'm out. You know what there I mean? Go. <laughs> like- I'm going to go to the office again. <laughs> <laughs> As I always do. <laughs> That's why when you see a successful child who had a successful parent, it's it's kind of impressive. What? Well, yeah. Because yeah. you're like, damn, where did you find that? Right. Because all of us, we all have inspiration to try to be better from all of our situations. Yeah. yeah. When you grow up with, without shit, you're just like, or when you grow up not with someone successful around you, you're like, I want to be successful. I'm going to be that person. And that's the interesting thing. We lost that during the, uh, like the wars, like the Korea and Vietnam. Like once dudes weren't around as much, there okay. was no sons just hanging out with their dads, going to work with him every day. Crazy to think of that. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't, you weren't just tailing your dad to work to see what his world was. Yeah. You know what I mean? And well, then no because dads. of that, yeah. right. And then the, the dads who were around, they were always gone and at work. So this weird dynamic started to happen in the 50s and 60s where dad just became this angry curmudgeon. Yeah. Mm. He's at work nine, ten hours a day. Leave him alone when he comes home. The kids don't know him. Yeah. They don't fucking know him. And the wife knows the dad before all of the pressure. Yeah. So and he- I, I used to put all of my shit, all of like uh all of all my bad traits and personality things, I would always put it on the fact that I didn't know my dad and not just the fact that maybe I'm a shitty dude. Okay. <laughs> you know? I was always like, no, it's because I didn't have a dad. If you yeah, grew up yeah, with yeah. a dad, <laughs> you're a good guy. <laughs> and then I saw it, I was like, you know what? I think this might just be a me thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might, I might be the Because my dad was pretty cold. Like, I learned, but I'm still, I consider myself an okay guy. Yeah. I, mean, I had my pop. And it wasn't like a bad nut. No, he was a cool guy. Yeah. He, he when you say me cold, I'm, you mean he was cold, like cold blooded or cold like in a good way? Cold like cool. Like cool. my dad is okay. a he's a he's a dad. Like, you know. Also, you yeah, your parents, yeah. like with your parents' dynamic, you got to see them like they didn't hate each other from a long marriage. Cause I always think that's interesting. They hate each other from a short marriage. Exactly. And that's and my mom, like- my mom hated my dad from a marriage I never saw. <laughs> so I was just like, I don't know what this fucking heat is. Right, right, right. But I know this guy ain't fucking liked around here. Yeah. <laughs> And then you hung out with him. That's what's funny because I think we had similarly had that. My dad was very fucking fun to hang out with. Yeah, hey, my pop was cool. He was go karts, funny, yeah. uh, Nintendo, Dinosaurs, burgers. Oh, oh, oh my god, dude! We would go. He would take me to the movies. You want to talk about like Ninja Turtles, Wayne's World, <laughs> all the stuff that my mom was like, eh, Last Boy Scout. My, my dad was like, Yeah, we're gonna watch that. Oh yeah, yeah. And Dads make like, those. It's <laughs> funny what you said when we talk about <laughs> Jurassic Park. I saw. I remember seeing Jurassic Park with my dad. He sat through it. Yeah. Because it was like, all right, this is what your kids want to see. Yeah. And then we theater hopped. Oh and yeah, go walk re- into our next movie. And the next movie that we walked into was Menace to Society. Crazy. <laughs> Zero to sixty. That's crazy. And we walk quick. in. They are cooking crack. You go like- from you go from life can fi- life will find a way to I'll suck your I'll suck your dick. Oh, I got these two cheeseburgers. I got these two cheeseburgers. Yeah. But the cook you crack scene. Your you remember that crack yeah. scene where they I was cooking the crack? Yeah, we went Jurassic you went fucking, Park. You went Triceratops to O Dog. Yeah, <laughs> to O Dog. Hey dog. When he shot hey, both homie, of them in the goddamn corner. Yeah, dude. <laughs> All I got is these cheeseburgers. <laughs> showed him the tape. Yeah. He was running the tape around town. Look, I shot these two motherfuckers. Another wild, That shit was a great story. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'll never forget that weekend because once we sat through the crack scene and then we got up and left. <laughs> 
and then we went to see Dennis the Menace. That's so <laughs> fucking funny. I will never forget all three of those movies were out. Dude, that was <laughs> so funny. The, that fucking dip where you go yeah. like, hey, we're going to go into some real shit real quick. And then fucking, I how was, do you feel about Walter Matthau, Matthau was Mr. Bit, Wilson? Yeah, Walter I was Matthau. 10 when years old. Dude. Oh, I loved it, dude. I was 10 years, and I'll never forget, my mom used to cuss my dad out. <laughs> Because my dad, he lived in a in a really shitty neighborhood like before he got married. You know what yeah. I mean? My dad, he lived, uh, and he was a North Philly dude. He lived in West Oak Lane. But like, and then he got married to this girl, uh, this lady moved to South Jersey, you know, suburban yeah. neighborhood. But that's where you prior go. To that, that's where, dude, I, just from being friends with Big J, I know that's where you go. South oh, yeah. Jersey, yeah, 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 yeah. You go from fucking, Jay went West Philly to fucking South Jersey. Oh, we got a thing. Yeah. Oh, I know I got a thing. I be like, when I see a black dude who's with a white girl with little taupe kids, I go, he went all South Jersey. That motherfucker <laughs> went all South that's Jersey. That's so funny. You're like, I know exactly where you moved out. The black dude you went with right the over white that woman river? and two little beige kids. Now I'm like, that nigga went all yeah, South. Yeah, two little golden <laughs> retrievers. Yeah, dude. He's like, he went out and made himself some Mike Bibbies and yeah, got away from got Philly. Some nougaty ass kids out in fucking South Jersey. It's a beautiful thing. And people used to went love. South. That's, uh, I mean, that's like the epitome of success here in New York as well as down in oh, Philly. Long you got Island a Range Rochester. Rover with Jersey plates on it, or you know, just any nice car with Jersey yeah. plates. You're killing it, man. Yeah, you're doing well. You got that's it. So yeah. funny. That's so fucking funny. Yeah, but my mom, she used to get mad at him because I the shit that I would see while I was with him. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it was shit that he couldn't control. Sure, it's environmental. And but my mom just would not. Why do you have in these places? And it was just really weird. So what's so funny is my parents hated each other so much that my mom had no idea where my dad was taking me. So she would send me out because he lived in he lived north of San Francisco. So he lived in San Francisco until I was like ten, and then my grandmother retired, and he just went with her to this fucking shitty ass lake town. Mm-hmm. Which rural? Oh, that's where all your takes on lake people come from. Yeah, dude. Okay. <laughs> it, it fucking, it went from the best thing, the, the most I've ever felt like in a movie, like I know exactly what you're talking about, is in The Departed when Mark Wahlberg is busting Leo's balls where he's like, yeah, your dad lived in Southie and your mom was out in the suburbs. So every other weekend you're coming out down to Southie dropping your R's. You know what I mean? He's like, you're an Irish you're a, uh, yeah. He, he was charging for cold switching. Yeah. He, yeah. I Which that. is basically exactly where I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, because I would go, I would only see my dad once a year, but they would send me, I lived in a nice suburb outside of Denver in Aurora. It was fine, middle class. It was like green belts and shit and parks. And then I'd go stay with my dad and be like, this is, this feels dangerous. Mm -hmm. But no one told me it was dangerous. And then I grew grew up and I was like, Oh, that was dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, no, no. I, I was right. You I could feel day, it in the air. I felt, I swear to God, I swear to God, when I was like 10, 11, and 12, I felt like a pussy. Because I was like, why are all these kids, they got the drop on me. Whenever I'd see these late kids, they'd be like, eh, you know what I mean? And I was like, I don't know. It doesn't feel dangerous. I don't think it's dangerous. Maybe I'm just being a pussy. And then I grew up and I was like, no, no, no. What do you mean I when you say they had the drop on you? They would just be like, they'd just like check you real quick. I'm oh, like, shit. You ever tried fucking cigarettes? And just shit like that. Just like oh, yeah. backwoods just, kids. Just oh. where the fuck you was from. Yeah, well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like, like where your mama I mean, stay. But you can tell. That was your, where your yeah, mama stay. But that's like, like, I mean, you can tell, like, even when you're around someone who has more money than you. Mm-hmm. You know. Also, I was very much like, my mom was very uh, supportive in a right. way of, like, creativity. So I could play with, you know, action figures and comic books and all that stuff. It was like, my mom let me, I was, you know, only child, yeah. go get lost in your imagination. Right, yeah, right, go, right. Go, House of Mirrors, nigga. Yeah. My mom mirrored all the walls <laughs> in my own little world. Yo, dude, I, that's so funny, Derek, because above, we had, above our stove in our kitchen when I was, it was yeah. a reflective, like where the microwave was, yeah. it was reflective and I'd make faces and my mom would walk in the kitchen with her coffee and be like, <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. Just, I Moms just like, support that shit. Dad, yeah. shut it the fuck down. But my dad was different because my dad was so funny that when I showed up and I was funny too, he was like, I like this kid. Okay. And he was like, you can cuss. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. We would listen to fucking albums. He would like put comedy on But that's on also for me. interesting that in a, d- in a that's dangerous it. environment- yeah. You didn't know you were in danger, so that actually means he was a good dad no, who made drunk. you feel safe. <laughs> he was hammered all but the time. But you still, but you felt safe. There was I just a, loved there was an him. element of safety around. Yeah, because I just loved him so much, and also I was always, I was mostly the only kid around whenever I was around him. Because again, this is like a guy who's a bartender at a bowling alley in this yeah. small ass town, just going out, getting drunk, taking me to like you know 
mobile homes and just get he's just getting fucked up while i'm running around the backyard with the dog so to me i'm like i'm just playing with this fun dog and then i come inside and i sleep on the couch while he bangs this woman <laughs> that inevitably gives him hepatitis c which turns into cirrhosis <laughs> we don't know the science of it yet but i'm just like i'm sleeping on this couch and the only thing i'm noticing is why are we having dinner at 11 15 p.m dang mom cooks dinner at 6 30 yeah Nana has dinner at 6.30 when I'm at with grandma's. Why are we having dinner at fucking 11? Yeah. And that is hammered. Yeah, <laughs> He's yeah, like, yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah. But it was never like, but then now when I go back, what's crazy is when I take people to where my grandma lives. I took my mom. For my, my grandmother turned 90 five years ago, and I took my, my mom. I was like, it's not her mom. It's my dad's mom, and he's been dead for years. But I took my mom with me to this town where she knows I've been going since I was 10. She's never been there. Okay. So we flew into San Francisco, we drove up, we hung out there, we were driving back, and my mom was like, God damn, I didn't know that place was that big of a shithole. Yeah. And I was like, that's where you were sending me, for weeks. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, I thought you were just complaining. And I was like, no, I was right, I was right. <laughs> like, my mom was driving wow. up. Dude, I took my girlfriend, last July 4th we went out there, and my girlfriend and I went out there to so she could meet my grandma. We had to go get ice for the 4th of July party. We go to this gas station, and I was like, yo, this is... <laughs> Stay in the car. Mm -hmm. and, and she knows I'm dramatic. I got back in the car and she was like, this is fucking terrifying. Wow. She's like, the woman in the car next to me has not stopped staring at me the whole time. I'm like, yeah, dude, this is like the, the hills have Because they can eyes. see right. it. Like they a, can like, see. I feel like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre town. Yeah. Yes. Like like you're, but you're able to see it. Yes. I remember like everybody's like, in on it. Everybody's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. I remember when I had house. to uh, learn to downplay the fact that I had a mom that, you know, cared a little bit yeah you know what i mean yeah. so uh, because the kids outside were rough about <sighs> shit like that you you just show i remember one time being in a neighborhood where i had a phillies jersey on it was just a little majestic jersey okay. yeah the blue with the red pinstripes totally. and my boy was like yeah you might want to take that off like it, yeah they're going to get on you just because it's a nice look look you around. have something nice and that was the thing that was when i started to see oh all of these kids are wearing the flight jackets mm -hmm. the dicky work pants you yeah. know what i mean it affordable was affordable like, shit right you know what i mean and and they were hostile towards the other like anyone that was different than that mm -hmm. and the, fa the fascinating thing about it was this is like when i was a teenager kids started doing the stick up shit you know yeah. what i mean oh, shit. I was around for some stick-ups. I've probably even participated in a few. Sure. We never kept anything that we took off of anybody. What would you do with it? It would end up being destroyed within a few hours. They would just fight. Or it was like watching a pack of wild dogs just destroy something. They had no concept of value of anything. It was just like, so they we don't like, want you to have it. You got the jersey last time. Let me get the necklace this time. They were just like... No. Like, okay, anything like jewelry, anything like that, somebody might keep. Sure. But something like robbing someone for like a jacket... Yeah. Yeah, you'll probably just put the jacket on and fuck around and then fight over it. Do an impression then, of the guy you just robbed? Yeah, yeah. Look at me, I'm a fucking idiot. And oh, then, I came down the wrong street. They just, man, fuck this jacket and throw it down and then they, they just move on. It Damn. was insane. Yeah. I used to have different experience. I remember because my mom would send me to my cousin's house in North Philly yeah. every summer to yeah. toughen me up. Oh, fuck. So they would Those take care of it my mom wouldn't work. Yeah. But you gotta understand, she still set me up to fail because I'm from the Burbs. I remember I walked out north in North Philly with that karate gi on, mm. and my grandma picked me up, and I had a yellow belt. Oh my god! These niggas was on every block, like, oh, it's time to go. They yeah. rushed me. Oh, you know karate? Why don't you try to kick my oh, ass? Nigga? Yeah. It was Fuck. my grandma pulled me in the car, yeah. threw me in the Cadillac. You we started, gotta get started, the fuck out of here. You started slowly going into stance. <laughs> Nana like, was like, bring your little curly head ass because <laughs> little Derek, they're like, well, you know, yellow, you're a yellow belt? He goes, fuck, be the wind. <laughs> just like, just sensei, like sensei, sensei said, sensei, my white sensei yeah. with a Jerry Curl at so, Tiger Showman. Sensei, uh. Steve, sensei Steve said, find your chi yeah. and punch to it. And you just see him just, yeah. he, they gets, was he coming gets the out one of kick off they was but coming goes out down. Of house. You know when I realized that My kid, grandma saved my life that night. That's Shirley so funny. threw me in the cab like, get your ass in the goddamn car. We got to get the fuck out of here. It what, was so funny. One of my favorite realizations of a child that I didn't have the killer instinct, one of the immediate responses was, I love, I still am a huge professional wrestling fan. Absolutely. Loved my whole life. When I was a kid, I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And my mom was like, and I was like, I want to wrestle. My mom's like, well, you know what's different? Like wrestling's like, wrestling and i was like i don't care i just, I just wanted to wrestle and so she put me when i was like five six and seven i was on a wrestling team and these kids were 
different. These kids had dads that taught them relentlessness, that oh, taught them attack. Shit. So I remember the first time I got a double leg takedown, and the kids taking me down. I'm like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. That's enough. And they're like, won't stop. And I'm like, I'm starting to get huffy because I'm I got bitch energy. So I'm like, stop, stop. And they're like trying to fucking take me down. I'm like, this guy's mean. But that's when you realize like I ain't like that. I ain't you like know that. what's so funny about that too? We were talking about this before about how we playing basketball last week and Lewis starts grappling people. Yeah, with that. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, because of that Lewis trauma is- of kids kids going that far i didn't even let him wrap me up before i punched him in the dick <laughs> oh shit. and he's like you you do? i'm like shot. yeah i'm sorry don't. like it's uh i don't let people get that <laughs> yeah. far don't. even the other night we were standing at the cellar and the security guard put the gate down to close things up and then climbed over it and my reaction was like yo w- w- what are you doing you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and he he's went, like <laughs> he's looking he at me like thing. what's the matter with yeah. you yeah, what's and i'm like i when people start moving like that yeah I, not because and then of dave that said trauma. the funniest yeah. shit dave said the funniest shit now i feel like a bitch because i'll let you get that close i yeah. could have yeah, died yeah because that's how you feel afterwards yeah. it, when a motherfucker gets you in a chokehold or makes you tap that was out my fault. and you're like yeah, why did I let him get in position? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, or before be like, you oh, started sh- wilding out, you sh- know? Before you start thrashing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris yeah. Rock had a joke about that. And one of them specials, he was like, he let, he, sent, he let some white dude get up near his neck. Yeah, nigga, you yeah, agree? Oh, oh um, that was my fault. Bigger and blacker. Yeah, when they, I think it was uh, the next one. Oh, uh, y'all scared. Yeah. Yeah, never, never, scared. never scared. Never scared. He never said some thing yeah. about which, by the way, scared. Nice scared. <laughs> <laughs> better go, better go amend that title. <laughs> Will Smith walking scared. at you. Hey, Bet you're I a little need scared. Chris, for, like you said, that first fifteen minutes better has come with to it. be insane. That's Ooh. the revenge that every comic can have. Absolutely, is time and jokes. So if you oh, get yeah, embarrassed, yeah. like Pete Davidson, in six months can have ten on Kanye that you're like. This is unbelievable. Mm. He has the opportunity. All to you do have that. to do is say nothing. All you just yeah, you like, know, like if you're Chris Rock, just deal with it right now, and then in a year when you drop that HBO special, yeah, the first a, fifteen minutes it, just lay out Will Smith, and then everyone's and like, it's eternal. And then it's yeah, then it's, it's permanent. It's, ev- it's, 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 it's the final word. Yeah, because you're like, well, this is and in good comedy, you make fun of yourself, so he's going to make fun of himself in it. Yeah, but really, you're laying both people out. Absolutely. Um, I cannot wait. I like. I'm so geeked Eric for this. Eric says man it now. all the time. Don't get mad. Get funny. Man. Don't yeah. get angry. Get it, funny. The only if you thing, can get funny with this shit. The, oh my god. The only thing that ruins funny is is getting mad. Absolutely. Dude, so we would think about this too. What do you think? Like the other guys, like someone like Dave Chappelle, definitely called Chris Rock to laugh at him. He's like, night, right? Oh, Chris. <laughs> oh, you got slapped, Chris. What the hell happened to you, man? I can't believe he Independence Day you. <laughs> God damn it, Chris! You let him welcome to Earth, you welcome to Earth, yeah. welcome to Earth. I was yeah, six dude. degrees of separation, <laughs> motherfucker. They hit you hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a perfect slap. It was a perfect slap. Yeah. It was a perfect slap. That's weird that he oh, let Jerry, him get that. I mean, I wouldn't have known what to do oh, either. What Seinfeld is saying, like, yeah. what is Jerry Sue, saying? Sue, you got to sue him. <laughs> What's the deal with him slapping <laughs> you? You can't slap. He oh. slaps us out. It's a sue. <laughs> sue him for slapping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, all of his friends that called it. Because mm-hmm. uh, all, Chris Rock is friends with all millionaires. He yeah. doesn't give a fuck fuck about the three of us as three of us that have been around him and watched that uncomfortable shit yo dude monroe said something to me that helped me deal with chris rock being mean to all other young comics because i was like listen as a white dude sometimes you just kind of got to realize older black guys might not like you because you're a white guy you're the older versions of you probably weren't great to them (laughs) so you just got to kind of understand so rock was always like dude there was one night at the cellar where it was me chris rock and neil brennan sitting at the table Spring is here. Isn't it time to clean up your mismatch and worn out socks collection while making your feet feel amazing in shoes, sneakers, or boots? Heshi socks are truly the only hybrid fashion athletic sock on the market. Mm -hmm. Are you tired of your feet hurting in your dress shoes? Heshi's cushion feet and arch support solves that. Tired of digging your socks out of your boots? Mm. Has she stay up technology solves that. Stay up technology. Tired of your feet stinking in your kicks after a workout or game? Has she's breathable cotton and antimicrobial properties Antimicrobial? Solve that. Yeah, man. Uh, like most fashion, athletic, and dress socks are expensive, poorly constructed, and provide zero protection. Not ours. 
Heshi cut out the middleman and provides a superior product at a superior price. And on top of that, with multiple styles and colors, you'll just look good while feeling great. Mm. Don't just take our word for it. Go to HeshiSocks.com. That's H-E-S-H-I-S-O-C-K-S.com. Enter promo code N-E-E-D-30 for 30% off your entire order on our fashion and athletic or basic socks, thirty percent off. Order, you, so, you put odor and order together. Yeah, yeah, order. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm still caught up on antimicrobial. Yeah. I like that. Just antimicrobial as a word is, is incredible. Antimicrobial yeah. properties, like that's a lot of. That's syllables. like splendiferous. That's yeah. splen- someone tafferous. blended two things together. Antimicrobial. Pro- I need some lotion that's antimicrobial. But this is the time of year, though, man, to get like new socks. Like it, I'm not gonna lie, getting new sneakers, especially okay. around Easter. Can't have new sneakers without new socks. And man, oh man, but new socks feel good, even in old sneakers. They and do. Thirty yeah, percent off. Yeah. And like, after thirty percent off, yeah. Why? Why wouldn't you just get some new fucking socks? It's like for 30%. fresh draws, fresh draws on a dirty pair of jeans, but they still <laughs> fresh draws. HeshySocks.com, the best thing that ever happened to your feet. Let's get back to it. Back to it. And everything I would say, Chris Rock would respond to Neil Brennan instead of me. Oh and yeah, I, I hate I, when people do that shit. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I, and at one point I go, am I a ghost? <laughs> Did I fucking die? <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Because like, that. literally, I, yeah, I would say it. You can do yeah. I would, shit is retarded. It's, it's absolutely a form so of retardation. Because effort on their part also. <laughs> he, he, literally, like, he, like he's being fucking, like, I'd be like, yeah, no, 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 and then he would just turn to Neil and be like, I don't know what that's going on. And I would say it, and I'd be like, I asked it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Said it. <laughs> that's like so, blood who don't acknowledge the, the letter C. Yeah, they're like, dude. Yeah, yeah. Bit yeah. They're like, dude. Them they're bits. like, Burt Schilling shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't like him. But he he just wasn't. Ha- and I, it, it, listen, you can be my hero all you want. I think mm. Chris Rock did some of the best stand up specials of all time. Absolutely. You're a dick to me for a couple of years. Uh-huh. You're going to not really be my hero anymore. Mm. Absolutely. You're going to be a guy that I'm like, that you watched I walk away from right so, I walk away from that, yeah, yeah. after that moment when he would walk into the cellar I'd be like this motherfucker and yeah. I'd have to go downstairs because uh-huh. I just don't want to deal with him just being a fucking dick to you so I always was like eh, I'm a white dude what do you expect yeah. I didn't hold it against him I'm like hey. yeah. I just thought it was like some he shit. shit on us too and right. then, and then Monroe, Monroe was yeah. like yo he's a dick to me and I was like yeah. what <laughs> and he's like, and then I'm like, what? Well, fuck this guy. Yeah. There was like a whole thing where I was like, then I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was, yeah. I was giving you the benefit. I was giving you nah. the historical benefit of nah. the doubt. I'll give and it to, I'll give it to this only because I'm night. starting, to, ca- I'm starting to catch this now. Derek is very mean to young comics. Very mean. Yeah. To young <laughs> Come on, Derek. It's brutal. But, 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 but it might serve a purpose, and I don't really know if I'm necessarily totally against it. I well, well here's the on. thing. He's just annoyed with them. He's yeah. annoyed with them because they've been reaching out to him a bit longer than I'm starting to get to reach out now also. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, fuck these young comics. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm starting to lean into the dark side of like. I get, mm. I uh, it, I think that's like a part of growing up, especially in this business, is now I'm definitely at the part where I remember when I would like, you know, 10 years ago, I'd come to like stand up New York and Rich Voss and Jim Norton would be talking and all I'd want to do is be a part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then I knew Rich but didn't know Jim and I'd be like, hey Rich, how's it going? And he'd be like, ugh, (laughs) like that. And I'm like, that's what I do. That's, and that's, I think we need more of that because in the age of false positivity that you get with social media when there's so much false positivity and false like absolutely you're right you're fucking right you're always right you're the man you've never lost <laughs> you need people that are in this business to be like you need to make you need to be uncomfortable yeah 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 there's a there's a there's a good amount of progress that can be made in comedy from you feeling uncomfortable it's called the spirit of patrice yeah dude patrice dude it's called the spirit of patrice but, man but if but yeah. Knowing Patrice, you also knew that he did the flip side of it. And if he knew you were uncomfortable, he would make you feel comfortable. He, he did. He would do that. Because I remember him doing that to me at Stand Up New York. I was completely by myself in the corner of the bar drinking a beer. I had just bombed doing a check spot. And it was just me, him, and the bartender. And he just had like a very quick conversation with me. Just very like, hey, how you doing, man? Like in a way where I was like, oh my God. But he was always cool. He was I was always like, cool oh my me. God, Patrice is fucking talking to me. Yeah. And then I fucking, I was like, oh, well, Patrice and I are boys now. So the next time I walked in and stand up in New York, I saw Patrice. I was like, hey, Patrice. And he was like, ugh. <laughs> and I was like, shit, shit. 
<laughs> yeah. But he kept you he kept you balanced. Yeah. That yes. was like it was like I'm trying not to do that. When young comics come up and say hello, I will acknowledge them, and shake Balance. their hands, but I will go right if back you, to my conversation and allow them to stand there. Balance. Yeah, if you if you come at me comfortably, I'm not gonna like it. You come at me awkwardly, I am gonna be like, Hey, what's up? How are you? You all right? You know? But you come at me comfortably, I'm gonna be like, Who what are that's you? That's exactly the who the fuck are you? Oh, that's yeah. wild. Okay. All right. It, it's it, there is there's something It's literally the same. Watching people walk up to Derek and like in the green room or anything, be like, Oh, we're boys. And you watch yeah. Derek just go, Oh, I'm gonna make them realize that we're not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, all it really takes is one question where you're like, What? Who are you? What? And then they're like, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I made a guy. I made. I made a guy a young comic nervous because he was like, uh, he got too comfortable too quick. And Absolutely. We were, we were talking, and he was like, "Oh, your boy is with Shane." And I was like, "Yeah, Shane's my boy. I love Shane. He's like one of the funniest comics out there." And he was like, started using Shaneisms with me, where he's like, started calling me Danny Sodes. He's like Danny Sodes oh, over here, and I was like, "No, hey, 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 that's, that's, oh, that's no. a thing my friend says. Yeah, oh, no. you're not him. He's like no. the dad on Liar Liar. Oh, yeah. Watch yeah. out for the claw. That's exactly like, what it was. Ew, dude. That's exactly what it was. And I told him, I go, "Hey, <laughs> stop stealing the man's <laughs> saying." Wild. And the guy was like, "Oh, oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. yeah what the fuck? I was on the road. He's like doing no, no, that no. most shit." You know what I hate most? Motherfuckers doing the most. I keep telling y'all. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but he really like. That's funny that you say. I think about times that I've been probably too confident approaching older cousins. As you said that. that, I think about like Bobby Kelly and them always shooing me away from the table. Stop trying to act like you're a part of something. And the thing that would make me mad was I could beat these guys the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're old. And I'm like, am I supposed? To, what am I supposed to do here? Someone. Yeah. That Someone McGoon. tell me what to do because yeah, this is, you're hitting the Will Smith paradigm. Right, right. I'm like, yeah, I, I was up. disrespected as a man yeah. right now. Fuck this comedy oh, shit. shit, dude. There was there was times where it was like, uh, I, I it was crazy when I would catch it, and then I would see a guy a level above me catch it, and I'd be like, God, this doesn't end. Like I'd watch DeRosa just take a beating, and then they'd be done with him. Mm -hmm. And then they move down a level, and they're like, ah, "Bobby, your opener bugs me." And I just be like, <laughs> "Dude, I've told this story before, but it's one of my favorite moments of comedy because you know the comedy seller was you know, getting past there was like, oh shit, massive." Yeah. And I used to just go watch shows. I'd go to the earlier shows because I could get in free now, and I'd yeah, just like yeah, sit there yeah. and watch shows on the runners. And like, I'm watching a show, and uh, I was opening for Bobby Kelly at the time, and it was like 2010, 2011, and Jim Nort Colin Quinn comes downstairs and Colin's like, come here. And I'm, it's, he's one of my favorite comedians of all time. So I'm like, what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'd met Colin through Joe or whatever. First time I met Colin Quinn with Joe list, Colin Quinn goes, what's your last name? I go, Soda. He goes, Ugh, change it. That's all he said. to me. <laughs> but then he brings me upstairs. He's like, come here, come here. And he's like, you open for Bobby, right? And I'm like, yeah, uh, I'm on the road with Bobby. And he's like, come with me. And it was Keith uh colin jim norton lenny marcus and and someone else were sitting there and they sat me down at the table and they're like bobby kelly is a bully and he bullies you and i was like no no because i'm trying to get bobby's back i'm like no bobby doesn't bully me and they're like you can admit it yeah. and jim norton's like you can admit it you're yeah. safe here yeah. admit it and i'm like no nah, bobby's not a bully bobby would never bully me and they're like, and Colin's like, seriously. And Keith is getting angry. He goes, I know he's a bully. Say it. I know he's a bully. God damn it. Bobby Kelly's a bully. Just admit it. And I go, finally, I break. And I go, it's just like moments on the road where he like bullies me. And they all, oh, oh. And as they say that, Bobby's walking into the cellar. Wow. And they're going, Bobby, he was saying you were bullying wow. him. And Bobby just looks at me and he goes, what the fuck? Dude, I don't fucking bully you. You want me to bully you? And I was like, no, no. I was so, dude, I was shook. I was shook. I was shook for like a week. I just it's left so being like, oh, fuck, dude. I, I love every moment of it. And then that the first weird. time we were back on the road, he's like, so I'm a fucking bully, huh? I'm like, I didn't say that. They Jesus trapped me. Jesus Christ, man. They trapped me in the same. It was yeah. entrapment. And, and then they beautiful. people have grown up to do the same Absolutely thing. Absolutely beautiful. Jesus Christ, man. Christ God, I love jokes. I yeah. love everything yeah. about New York stand-up. I really do. <laughs> That's why I'm out here. Yeah. For yeah. shit like that. It's so fun. To hang and that shit. Yeah, just to be. Just to be able to fuck with somebody like that is just so <sighs> beautiful Give them a good story to tell on a podcast 15 years from now. Yeah. And it's all cool. <laughs> when I could call him and be like, I love you. He's like, yeah, dude, I got a kid. What do you think? You think I fucking give a shit about you anymore? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, he definitely good for him, man. Yeah, he he definitely le- leaned into the dad life, and you know he's the man. Yeah, Bobby Kelly's one of the funniest out. human beings on the planet. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I love him to death. This is a great one, man. Uh, I don't even we have time to get you to tell a story where you should have apologized but didn't. But, uh, I don't. know, We hmm. ask everybody that. Has there been a time? You know. I probably. I would have to think. I've smoked too much weed. I have a layer of resin around my memory. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, uh, there's definitely been times, you know, because I think I was, I think like all men, I was aggressive and stupid in my early 20s. Mm. Probably like with friends, you know what I mean? I definitely remember like dating a girl in Arizona that dated my friend and it didn't end well. And we were kind of friends. And I asked him like, is it cool? Oh, shit. Because she had like reached out to me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, is it cool if I hang out with her? And he was like, yeah, that would just kind of make me feel uncomfortable. And I still did it. <laughs> and I did then, the same thing. And then when he found out. I did the same thing. Yeah. And then when he found out, he was like mad and I didn't back down because I was oh, like. Oh, I know that happened. But I, was, I should have apologized. I should have been like, that, that was shitty. Of me. Yeah. Or did, were you and a friend ever able to work it out or no? I mean, like, yeah, as in you you 20 years later, <laughs> 20 years later, you get an email that's like, hey. How are you? And you're like, good, man, on Facebook, you know, and you're like, are you good? And he's like, I got the wife and the five kids. And you're like, sorry about Jennifer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really felt, felt bad about that one. Yeah. But she's married too, and I'm fucking, you know. Yeah. You said you did that too, huh? Yeah, man. Remember, remember the girl from London, Suzanne? Uh huh. That was, that was my homie chick. Uh, and, I, and they broke up on some terrible terms, oh. you know. She That's, terrorized that motherfucker. Yeah. And then she called me four, year, four years later talking about, I'm coming to New York for holiday. Can you show me around? And you're like... Pfft. And I called my man. I was like, yo, she, gonna, she want me to quote unquote show her around. She's always been bad. I've always liked yeah. Jax, man. Is it going to be... Dad, you cool? Like, you know, when black dudes... Yeah, y'all gotta do y'all thing, man, <laughs> and all that shit. Yeah, y'all adults. When y'all give me, you give me that, y'all adults, you touched. But I and man, me and her was like damn near in a relationship after that, like sort of, kind of on and off yeah. across the Atlantic level type shit. That it is was terrible to just watch your friend be happy with a chick that it went yeah, terrible man. with with you. She had Dude. money and she <laughs> rented out. You remember in Jersey City? Remember when you were starting comedy? Remember them two green apartment builders in Jersey City right on the water? Yeah, when Green Street and the other one, she she got a an apartment for a month at Green Street and let me stay. Jesus Christ! So, oh my God, the view of the, the thing, and then she, I'm making love to a woman that's from Britain, yeah. from yeah. UK. Oh, life. bro, yeah. yeah, dude. She she boosted you up after terrorizing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she your broke your friend. friend and then went to break you, <laughs> which is crazy because I've been the other thing. I've dated someone and then broken up. Not on terrible terms, but not on good terms. And then my friend has dated her and then stopped being friends with me. Wow. We weren't close friends. That's fucked we were... up because that sounds like there was bad mouthing at, at, from them. Like they're in there yeah. talking about the me shit and this that guy you've used done. To drink yeah. beers and shit all the time. We, we were waiters <laughs> together, but he got, he got with an ex and then all of a sudden was not friends with me. And I was like, I. I gave you the green light. Yeah. I gave you the thumbs up. I was like, that would be, that'd be beautiful. They're married. They have a kid now. And I'm yeah. like, it worked you, out. You good luck. It worked out. Why are you fucking, why are you mad at me? Okay. No, maybe it's a little bit of an in head thing. I, I had that also. There was a guy who hit my girl before I hit mm-hmm. and he made it sound like it was easy. Yeah. And I was so mad because I was about three dates in and yeah, hadn't yeah, got yeah. this pussy yeah, yet. That's so funny. So, that's like, you know. You're uh, like, you fucking liar. <laughs> Well, well, and the thing that fucked me up about it was he had pictures of her. So, like, I didn't know. Like, I had, basically, I met her. We went on a date, and I was showing her how, like, Facebook gives out your phone number. Yeah. But we weren't friends at the time. So, I was like, friend request me, and then you see the mutual friends. Oh, you're talking about with the Messenger app? With the, like, with this the... was, like, way back in the okay. day. Like, people, when you signed up, your phone number was visible in the Oh, I remember that. Right. Yeah, your so email, I, phone number, everything right. was right there on your profile. Right. So I was showing her that, but we weren't friends, so we requested each other, boom, and then we see the common friend. And I'm like, oh, how you know this dude? And she was like, oh, yeah, I know. Blah, blah, blah. And she flagged it oh, off. Oh, she yada, yada, yada. Right. Mm-hmm. So yada, yada, yada. I <laughs> worked with him. I ran into him at a happy hour, and I'm like, yeah, man, I just met this girl that, you know, uh, she says she knew you. You know what I mean? Say the name. And he's like, oh, yeah. What was the name? Charvella. It was yeah. Miss Charvella. Oh, <sighs> shit, it was Miss Charvella. <laughs> yes, it was my ex But... He he pulls out the phone. He's got pictures of her 
she's at work, like, you know, showing the goods. Oh, and I'm no, like, not oh, Sharp, no. this chick is like that. Not Miss Sharp. But no. I'm out here waiting. Dude, I waited oh, I for this girl. And then it worked <sighs> out. But when it worked out, between me and her, I couldn't really be friends with the dude that smutted my chick out before I get me. That. You know what I mean? I like, get that. <laughs> like, I, I get, get it. it. Everybody got paid, but damn, he yeah. smutted her. You yeah, know what dude. I mean? Like, you might have rented the car, but I bought it. <laughs> yeah. You don't fucking and smoked it out. Yeah. I smoked out that rental. Yeah. I smoked it out. He's didn't like, spray <laughs> shit. He's like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even put goddamn didn't even put gas back in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I left it at a quarter tank. <laughs> 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 so I couldn't be friends with him, man. Yeah. It's just weird. You I know what I mean? That. He's a good guy. He's I, I get that. Out there doing, doing this thing. Uh, yeah, God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. I love this podcast. I know, man. Oh, shit. She's going to be mad if she hears that. Whatever. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I, I already... Wait, know, who's going to be mad? Like, yeah. yeah. Huh? Who's going to be mad? Mr. Charvel. Uh, That's who's going to be mad. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's bad, too, because I shouldn't even say this, but it's such a made-up, unique name <laughs> that, like, I don't think there are any others out there. Yeah. Like, hey, so... She knows her. She knows her. She's like, you fucking said it, you piece of Dude, shit. Dude, yeah, let me go, because I was about to say, my baby moms have the worst names, but I'm not out here putting my baby <laughs> Yeah. Basically, I have yeah. two, three-syllable baby moms. That's correct. <laughs> Which means you'll definitely get in trouble That's if you say the full name. That's six way. syllables. Yeah. That's six syllables for two women. That's so that shit's fun. crazy, bro. Right? This That's has so been a good one, I would one, scare man. a job application. Dan Soder. <laughs> Dude, thanks Thank for you for me. stopping by, man. Yeah. Where can the people find you if they're looking for you? Uh, DanSoder.com for live dates. At Dan Soder on socials. Uh, listen to The Bonfire, Monday through Thursday, 5 to 7 p.m. on Sirius. It's a podcast. Just go download it and give it nice reviews. Nice. Yeah, that's it. Also, uh, give us some reviews. We need to be rated, subscribed. Uh, also, for our YouTube channel, uh, we We're need a five, few. Right? Yeah, we need a few more to get to this 5K subscription. 5K. So, uh, 5K. there's enough of you watching this goddamn episode. Mash the subscribe button. Get us over to 5K. Subscribe, subscribe, we'll give you something subscribe. good, something nice there. Uh, Black ass comedy show every goddamn Sunday. Every Sunday. Working on a live stream soon. Bobby Hutch, can you hear me out there? Nope. No, no, but Bobby's supposed to help us figure out the live stream. Yeah, so. but we're supposed to get that live stream comedy show. We're going to get it going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for all you podcast listeners that can't make it to Brooklyn every Sunday, help is on the way. Help is on the motherfucking <laughs> way. All right, Dylan, say goodbye to the people. Guys, make sure to give us five stars on iTunes and please subscribe. All right, well, Natalie, say goodbye. Same thing. Love the show. Support All it. All right. Indeed. Derek, say Hey, you know what it is. It's the great boy. T-H-E-G-R-E-A-T-B-O-Y. I'll talk to you all. Derek Gaines. And I'm Dave Temple. Thanks for tuning in. Good night. Bye.